Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life's channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. So the weekly channeling video is going to feature a famous afterlife psychic. This is a psychic from the afterlife. She is very well known. She was one of the first, I would say, psychic. She was the first psychic I ever knew about. And she's written tons of books and she was on many, many daytime talk shows. She has some unique features and characteristics such as her voice sounds unique. And I thought it would be a kind of an interesting conversation to have with Sylvia Brown in the afterlife. This should be interesting. I have never really channeled a psychic. So let's see how this rolls, all right. So I have a notebook in front of me where I was going to sit before this session and give some energy to allowing myself to connect in with what I might want to ask Sylvia. And so I have a few, just a couple, I only wrote three things down. And as the questions were coming to me, the responses, I could start to hear the sound of her unique voice. Um, she had a very kind of raspy, gritty voice, very unique to her. And so it's easy to um, connect in with that clairaudiently, which is the ability to hear spirit. And I'm a little bit nervous isn't the right word, but I'm a little unsure about this particular channeling because I... At the time that Sylvia Brown was really big and popular, I wasn't really, I didn't even know I was a psychic. I didn't even know I was doing psychic stuff. I had no idea that, I wasn't aware of my all of my gifts and skills and such. And so I guess maybe psychic stuff might have been interesting to me, but the only way that I even saw it would have been on the daytime TV shows when I was on maternity leave. <laughs> And that's it. Like I never read any books of hers or anybody else's for that matter. And after I kind of got psychic, then I started being open to psychic stuff. And that's when I met other psychics. Before that, I hadn't even had a psychic reading. Not, nothing. So I'm, I feel as though I may have, I know, I know, I'm just going to be really forthright, Sylvia, and be respectful as she's going to come in and sit down, she's kind of standing, and say that I know that I judged you. I judged you because all I had access to was my mind and my emotions, and I felt like my emotions were just supercharged, and I was very focused in my analytical mind. I was very successful in my career and having a family and managing the house and you know, working my way up the career ladder and all this success stuff, and I really wasn't, I did not recognize the importance of spirit, of intuition, I just had, thought I had a good sense of things. And it turns out I do. And it turns out so did you. So I'd love to welcome you in and have a very open-minded, <laughs> hearted, and spirited conversation. Miss Sylvia Brown in the afterlife. I, I wanna like stand up to kind of greet her. I feel like I should do that, have a seat. Thank you. She has a long kind of flowing, um, I don't know what I would call it, a duster on, and um, looks very comfortable. There's a light kind of pale pink color underneath. That's a long shirt, and then the duster only goes to like, maybe just, the long sleeve goes down to here, and then the duster goes to maybe, it's not just elbow length, it's, it's a little bit past the elbow, and it's loose, and it's like a purple lavender, and then the pants are really flowy lavender too, and then she has small flat shoes on, and, um, she looks very comfortable and she looks spirit, spirited <laughs> and beautiful colors. So the pink is, and the pink and the purple for me, when I see that, I know that it's a, a sign of respect. It's a gift of the heart chakra energy and it's also an acknowledgement of divine feminine. That pink energy is connected with Archangel Hanel and that purple energy is connected with Archangel Ariel. And for me, those two are a perfect balance, a whole energetic 
view of women. And so our soft side, our strong side, all of it. And so that is a res thank you. That is beautiful. Thank you. I I am I'm kind of excited now. My energy just shifted. I'm kind of excited to talk to you because I've never talked to a psychic before or a medium that is in the afterlife. She says there you know there's a few of us. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I've never yeah, you're my first famous psychic from the afterlife. So all right, so I have several questions for you. First of all, is there anything that you are, you really want to clear up about the afterlife, about being a spirit? Maybe some things that you might have misinterpreted as a psychic. And also too, psychic or medium, which were you? How would you describe yourself? because I think that's important because psychic and medium, a lot of people now use the term psychic medium together and some just use psychic, some just use medium. How, what would you consider yourself to be? She says psychic is what she considers herself to be psychic. She says psychic is traditionally known as more prediction or predictive behavior and of the human realm and yet has the opportunity to access uh, spiritual helpers and guides to allow humans to fulfill their life purpose and to find meaning in circumstances that are beyond their control, like tragic situations in particular, or happy circumstances too. Medium, I don't, I don't really, she's not, there's no energy around the word medium for her. And yet that's exactly what you did was connect with the afterlife. But she says, but it was, she said, you have to remember that the times were different then. I was one of the first, you know, I was one of the first very public faces of spirituality, of new age. And although there were many, many others, I just happened to be one that was invited to the stage. And because of that, the, the uh, term that was used for me was psychic and I'm, I am okay with that. I'm fine with that. So do you consider yourself more of a predict? Did you do a lot more predictions or a lot of uh, communicating with the dead people? She says both. I did both, but the mainstay was more in helping to, she is saying helping to determine the future determine the future. That's different than making predictions. Can you talk a little bit about that? It sounds like you know something different now from the afterlife perspective than you did when you were sitting on those talk shows. <laughs> she says, of course I do. Of course it's different. Of course you would expect it. Wouldn't you want it? Don't you want it to be different than what your just limited pea sized brain would give to you as an explanation? Wouldn't you want it? Of course you'd want it to be different. Well, you'd want it to be more. You'd expect more. And she says, more understanding. Hmm. Okay, so talk about predictions and uh, uh, psychic and that. Talk, talk, talk more about that. Explain that to us then now, how you understand it in the afterlife. It's one of the powers that you're given as a human. It's another way of seeing things, of managing things and networking and the ideas and the concepts of manifesting and co-creation and setting intentions and letting life unfold are very positive spiritual concepts that many tout. But in actuality, for many, you will only be as, as, as connected to your psychicness, to your psychic, no, she's not saying psychicness, to your psychic abilities as your mind will allow you to. Your mind is a powerful ringmaster and it truly is a circus down there. It surely is, it truly is a circus down here. She says down there and then she corrects down here. All right, so predictions then. Can you talk about how that works? Because I, I call myself psychic and medium because I'm both. However, I don't identify the word psychic, the term psychic as a person that makes predictions because I believe we co-create, we create our future. The best way to predict your future is to create it. That's what I wholeheartedly, I will stand and scream that until the day I die and go into the afterlife. But that's what I believe. So is that accurate? Because you're telling me 
that, I mean, kind of getting the sense that, is it not true? She says, no, I didn't say that. She says, I didn't say that. It's true for you if that's what you believe. You are limited by what you believe, what you can possibly conceive of in that, she says, she keeps referring to our brain as like a pea, a little pea-sized brain. Truly, the ego mind is much more of a hindrance than you ever could imagine. That is, it is much more abusive to you in your lifetime. It is much more the cause of your pain than anything that actually happens to you, even to your body, even horrible circumstances and situations. And I knew about that. I experienced abuse in my lifetime. I experienced devastating loss. I experienced divorce. I experienced a lot of things. I took a lot of things. I used to get death threats. I used to... I experienced a lot of that suffering, that human suffering. So I know, I know. Okay, so I'm shifting and I literally like get pulled kind of over a little bit. So realigning then as a spirit in the afterlife, what do you think about predictions and how our life unfolds then? Okay, is there any insight you can give us about that? She says, I said it, I've already said it, it's your mind. You are limited by what your mind can think. People say, have an open mind. Well, easier said than done. She says, easier said than done. Because what that means is a great deal of change for you. So is everyone psychic? Can everyone um, connect with spirit? Can everyone see their future? And are we supposed to do that? See our future? She says, of course, of course you can. You see your future all the time because you're constantly creating it. Moment to moment to moment. You see, there's no time. She says, there's no time in the afterlife. There's no time, it's not linear. So of course you can see your future every moment of every day. It depends on how you perceive. Again, that mind, that brain sees the future. What is the future? Five years from now, 10 years from now? Oh, please, you have no time for that. You have no time for that worry. All that wasted energy, all that energy you spend wasted in worrying, it makes you sick. It decreases your lifespan and it distracts you. It is a deterrent from following your life path. So is there like a predestined plan? Do we have a destiny or a fate? Of course you have a plan. You come in here with a plan because if you didn't have a plan, your brain would run, run rogue. It would run amok. It would be not rebellious, but it would be like a dictator. And in many cases, your brain is because you allow it to be a dictator. You allow it, your mind to think for you because that's its job, right? But you can't allow your mind, your brain to feel for you. And the communication between the way you feel and what you're thinking is where most people get off the track. That's when you step away from your line, your, um, she said like timeline, lifeline, life plan, lifeline. She's got the linear lifeline. She shows it to me like this and there's plots on the thing. That's when you step off of that. And sometimes all together, just stop doing it. Stop participating and just let your mind tell you what to do and you just do it mindlessly, mindlessly. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Kind of interesting. But it, so do we have a destiny? She says that concept of the, the fate, what is fated, is something that you've agreed to before you come in to your life. And you know, you recognize, you have spoke about this before. You know that you understand the energy of this, she says to me. You understand the energy of this. Is it like life theming, Sylvia? Is that what you mean? Like we have a theme that we come into our life, so we kind of know, and those are like fate pieces or destiny points kind of on this linear life that we're living is that is that accurate she says yes that's exact that's exactly right but it's not what your mind thinks it is your mind is limited in the definition again you are not a fan of the ego mind no i'm not but it's necessary she says no i'm not but it's necessary you need it it runs your body and the systems of your body you need it because you need a body in order to have your experiences so you need your mind. You need it. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Wow. Wow. All right. So is there anything in particular that you would want to share with us? Sylvia Brown, as we are talking to you in the afterlife here, thank you so much for being here. 
that you would want to share about your human life in reflection or that you might want to clear up in retrospect. I can think of something that pops into my mind and um, can I just ask you about that? Is that okay? I, don't, I, I, I want to make sure that I'm respectful. I remember, I recall this because it was kind of, it's something that sticks out to you in, you know, a person, especially if you're in the same, like if you're in an industry where you have other people in the same business as you, you kind of know, you know, uh, what's going on on a global scale, like bigger, like, you know, who's like heavy hitters in the industry and stuff. And so when some, then when this particular situation happened to you and you got a lot of criticism for it, I would like to talk about this if that's okay with you. She said, yes, I know what you're talking about. She said, yes, I know what you're talking about, the girls in the house, yeah. She said, yes, Bridget, I would love for you to talk about this. Clear this up, shall we? Let's do it together. All right. So there was a, I know, I remember, recall, that there was a situation where you got a lot of criticism because someone connected to a criminal situation and that was highly publicized, and I can't remember the state, and I don't want to say the wrong state, um, highly publicized case where women went missing, young girls went missing, and they were found in this house as like prisoners of this house for like, they lived there for I think like three years or something, I don't remember, it might have been longer than that, and for a long time, and this guy was like, you know, in, imprisoned these women, and one of them had a baby, and I mean, it was just awful situation, and you were asked on a public television show if the, one of the women was still alive and you said no, that she was dead. And so tons of backlash because years later, or I don't know the exact timeline, timing of it, but later on it was found to not be true that the girl that you were asked about, she wasn't dead, she was alive. So let's clear this up, Sylvia, I would love to talk talk to everyone and educate the viewers, people who love psychic stuff and spirituality and mediumship and all that. This, this kind of stuff, it happens. It doesn't mean Sylvia Brown was a fraud. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean she's a bad psychic. I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna stand up for you because I'm gonna say that because that's true. Because we get it wrong sometimes. And you know why? Because that poor little girl was suffering so much that it's completely possible that her spirit and her body detached. And from how she felt when Sylvia may have tried to connect into her energy spirit, it felt like she was dead. She was not here because she had to check out, separate her human experience from her spirit, her soul, so that she could survive and transcend the situation, the horrible circumstances, the abusive circumstances that she was in, and that's how she survived. Is that accurate, Sylvia? Is that how it happened? She says, you do the best you can. And I wanted, she says, I wanted that girl to be alive. I did a lot of work in criminal, she says, with criminal investigations and apprehension. I did a lot of work, a lot more public cases, Sylvia says, a lot more public cases than what was ever publicized. I did, had, I did a lot behind the scenes that a lot of people did not know. And she doesn't say that for like self-gratification, she says it to broaden your understanding of perspective and to help people like me who are a psychic, a medium, and a channel and sharing. This is how it works. We are also human beings and we feel energy this on different levels and experience things and interpret the energy that we feel with our minds, which are what? Limited. So she says, she felt dead to me. There was no life there. There was nothing. She says, usually when I feel into the energy of someone, when someone asks me for a missing persons case, I can usually see a light she's showing me like right at the heart, just above the heart, right here, right in the chest here, between the, the throat chakra here and the, the actual center of your chest right here. And she says, usually you can see a white, just a white circle of light, like it looks like a little flashlight kind of piercing through the darkness. So when I see that, then I know that they're alive and that there's hope for them. I can see that. So you were clairvoyant? Yes. 
Oh, yes, very, yes, very much so. Okay, very much clairvoyant. Oh, yes, very clairvoyant. And clairaudient, too. She says clairaudient, too. So she saw and heard. That was her, those were her big, her big things. I saw and I heard information. And most of the time, very accurate from what I understand. Mm -hmm. But you have opinions, too. So, and you're on live television, like answering this question and right in front of the family and feeling their deep desire for her to be alive and have, give them hope. And you had to tell them what you thought was true, that she was dead. She says, well, it was true. There was no light there. I did not see the light. There was nothing. There was no communication from her. There was nothing. Well, then if there was nothing, then couldn't you have went to look for her then in the afterlife? Or how does that work? So if you couldn't feel her life source as a person, because it is totally possible, you guys, to, to connect in with people who are still alive. I mean, I've done it many times with people who have Alzheimer's, dementia, children who have special needs that can't communicate at all. Um, I've done it myself. It's not hard to connect with someone's spirit and talk to their higher self and, and find out. In fact, I instruct women, mothers, especially dealing with teenagers, dealing with young kids, dealing with behavior issues, dealing with depression with their kids, and they're worried to death about them. Intentional choice of words. But what can they do? I'm like, if you can't talk to them in person, it's not working in person, the counseling's not working, that kind of thing, and you're just frustrated or you're sad or you're, you're, it's affecting you as the parent, I counsel people, I encourage people to talk to their higher self of the child. See that God light within them. That's what this is. That's what you see. That's fascinating. So then, Sylvia, then if you couldn't see that in human form, then why wouldn't you go then to the afterlife to ask for her? She says, I did. I did. I did ask. And someone came in front of me that looked like a guide for her, an advocate for her, and said, no. She's gone. She's done. No, she's done. Not gone. Is it gone or done? Because I can see the word. I can see the O-N-E. She's done. She's done. Like, so there was like a guide or somebody that stepped in front and waved their hand and said, she's done. So either if she wasn't to die from the circumstances that she was in, she was so lost from her human life, her actual life, that she, it's like she's a totally different person, a totally new person. Is that accurate? Some way to describe that? Yes. So was that a difficult time for you? Of course it was. Of course it was. She said, of course. You, you care about people. You want people to be healthy and happy, but that's not how it works. Bridget, you're not going to like this, she says. Bridget, you're not going to like this. Okay, well, I'll have a sip of coffee then. Hmm. It's not always pretty. Talking to spirits, getting involved in difficult situations is not always, and there's not always happy endings. There's a lot of drama and trauma and tragedy and horrific things that you see. This is why you don't do it. But there are others who do. We all have different roles. We all, we all step in and play different parts for society, for the community as a whole, for the greater good, the common good. But it's not, it's not pretty, it's not easy. She, she's, she's projecting this energy of, you have to just accept that you won't always be right. Sometimes you'll be wrong. And when you're wrong, that's when people remember what you say. They don't always remember all the times you were accurate, you were right, you got it right. But it, you have to let that go. It's not about your human mind. It's not a, you have to let go of the mind and the judgment and the criticism. You have to just accept and know that that's going to come and that's going to be there no matter who you are or what stage you're on, whether you're psychic or whether you're a teacher or whether you're a mother or what any career you're in, any path that you are pursuing for your purpose and your mission here as a human, you're going to get criticism. You're going to get hit hard at times and it, it, it hurts, but you got to develop. And I would use the word resilience. She says, you got to have courage. You got to just be brave and stick it out. Because if you don't, all the other spirits that you signed up 
to help in this lifetime won't get the help that you already committed to, so you got to stick with it. Is this the advice to psychics and mediums? Because I wrote that down. That was my number three question. Do you have advice for psychics and mediums? Stick with it. She says, you got to stick with it. Don't let people who don't know anything about your work, who don't know anything about this, on a, on a public level, who don't know anything, determine what you're going to do. Do not let people that know nothing about this. That's, it's not their responsibility to keep going, it's yours. You committed to all those other souls to help them out and they can't get the help from you that you committed to. Oh, maybe they'll find someone else, but that's not what you signed up for. You signed up to help them and you gotta stick it out. You got to find a way day after day to get back into work, to reconnect with spirit. And it's not easy. I had dark times. I dealt with alcoholism. I dealt with incredible depression. I had medications. I had, there was a lot of difficulty for me. I was very sensitive, highly sensitive. You don't see that on television. These aren't excuses. These are just circumstances and situations that humans face and you still go to work when you got a connection to your purpose you go to work you show up and you keep doing it until you can't do it anymore okay those are some very powerful words i'm going to watch this back and listen to that thank you for that thank you for that thank you for that so you don't hate me right now because I, ju I judged you? She says, you didn't know any better. You didn't know. Did you know? No. I didn't know what I didn't know. She says, you remember that. The people that are going to judge and criticize you, they don't know what they don't know. Because this isn't their job. It's not their job to figure it out. It's not their job. They're just passers-by. Let them keep walking by. They're passers-by. You guys, as you're watching this, as I'm talking with Sylvia Brown from The Afterlife, these concepts apply to you no matter what you're doing in your human life. The concepts of criticism and judgment, being right, apply. No matter what, you, what, what you're doing for your life work, what you're doing for your career, what you're doing with your family and managing your house, having kids, no matter what is important to you, you're gonna feel criticized or judged. And it's not easy. And it's going to be by people that don't know what they're talking about because they don't know your circumstance. They may have to think they have some experience in this or in that, but they don't know you. They don't know what you're made of, what you're capable of, and what you're supposed to be doing on this earth. You just focus on doing what you're supposed to be doing and ignore the rest. The rest is just static. Static. This was fascinating and fabulous. This was great. Thank you so much for your time, Sylvia. I do appreciate it very, very much. And for those who are fans of Sylvia Brown, she's like, love, thank you. She's like, giving you love, thank you. She says, thank you. Uh, we might chat again, should we? I think that would be great. If you have questions for Sylvia Brown in the afterlife, please, please, please post them because I think this would be a fabulous follow-up. We could do another interview. That would be great. Have another afterlife conversation with Sylvia Brown. But I need your comments to do that. There's a couple questions I have that I'd like to chat with her about. But I want your comments. You guys always ask wonderful questions. So please put them below. You know I'm going to read them. So you have been watching an afterlife interview at Above Life channel with Sylvia Brown, famous psychic medium, in the afterlife. Remember, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit to fill you up with hope because this is your life. This is your life, so live it. This is Bridget, thanks for watching.